Good Tuesday morning to you, everyone, and welcome back to Morning Musings. My name is Don K. Preston. I am the president of Preterist Research Institute, and I appreciate you being with me. Don't forget, July 12th through 14th, Preterist Pilgrim Weekend 2018, working on some really special stuff. Okay, and by the way, our theme this year is Back to the Basics. What are some of the most fundamental elements of understanding covenant eschatology? What is it that would lead a person to believe that Christ came in AD 70? I have been asked over and over, how in the world can you believe Jesus came in AD 70? Well, we're going to have our speakers explore and answer those questions. Okay, we're looking at the resurrection of 1 Corinthians 15, where Paul said that the resurrection would be when sin, the sting of death, would be overcome. You know what's coming. Deal with sin, you've dealt with death. By the way, did you know, I didn't know this until just the other day as I was reading uh, and doing a lot of research, John Calvin actually said that. John Calvin actually taught, and this is in Simon Kistemacher's commentary on 1 Corinthians 15, but John Calvin actually taught that if you deal with sin, you have effectively dealt with death. Now, perhaps not in the same way that I'm suggesting, but he caught the gist of what Paul was saying and the power and the role of dealing with sin as it relates to resurrection. I was, I, I was kind of blown away. I had never seen the quotes from John Calvin. Well, all of that said, notice now that Paul in Romans chapter 8 discusses the Holy Spirit and sonship in direct relationship to resurrection. I think it's critical. You know, one of the more controversial subjects uh, of the theological world, and it's been that way, will continue to be, what, be that way, is the subject of baptism. I'm not going to go into a multi-week discussion of baptism, but I want you to see what Paul has to say in regard to sonship resurrection, and baptism. Because in Pauline theology, there was a direct relationship, a direct connection. Now remember, as we've already seen in Romans chapter 8, Paul discusses the fact they had already received the spirit of adoption, whereby they cried, Father, Father, but they were waiting for the adoption. Now, guess what? In other places, just as, just as Paul does here, Paul would say they were children of God, but they were waiting for the adoption. Well, wait a minute. If they were already children of God, how, how could they be waiting for the adoption, which was the resurrection? There aren't two sonships. There are not two different forms of sonship. It is an initiation of a process awaiting consummation. Spirit of adoption waiting for the adoption. And the adoption is directly related to resurrection. Now, I want you to notice, let's go back to Romans 6, a text that we have looked at in this study. But boy, it's so critically important because Paul is not changing his subject. He's not changing the focus. And I want you to notice, starting with verse 4, Therefore, we are buried with him, that is, with Christ, by baptism into death. That like, and that like in the Greek is just like, just like Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also we also should walk in newness of life. Here is Christ dying. Paul says, <clears throat> we were buried with him. And by the way, the language here, as many Greek scholars have pointed out, is extremely powerful. Paul's not giving just so, some sort of kind of rough analogy. No, the words that he uses here and with the prefixes that he uses is soon, S-U-N, buried with him, raised with 
him. Powerful. Now watch. <clears throat> if, which means if and only if, if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Do you see where Paul looks back on their resurrection, or excuse me, on their baptism, and he likens it to death and to burial and to resurrection? Now, it seems to me, if we're going to deal honestly with the text, we're going to have to be willing to put aside our prejudices and our traditions and we're going to have to take a long, serious, analytical look at what Paul is saying. Knowing this, Paul says, that the old man <clears throat> is crucified with him, that, Greek word hyna, that the body of sin might be, that's in the subjunctive mode, which means has not yet been done, that henceforth we should not serve sin. The one who is dead, how did they die? Buried with Christ in baptism. Now, how does this relate? By the way, I hope you see Paul is talking about death, burial, resurrection. Is he talking about literal death, burial, resurrection, biological death, biological or physical burial, biological Resurrection? Well, pretty clearly not. <clears throat> but he is talking about being joined with Christ's death in baptism, raised to a new life, <clears throat> pardon me, in baptism. Now, watch in Galatians chapter 3. Now, remember, we are talking about death burial, resurrection, sonship, and of course, as we will see, inheritance. But in Galatians chapter 3, and, and you know the force of this is so incredibly powerful, Paul is writing in a context in which sons of God, under law, under the law, sons of God were produced by marrying and giving in marriage. Sons of God were produced by conjugal relations. But now, he is writing and he says, you know, only those who are of faith are sons of Abraham. Galatians chapter 3 and verse 6. That's stunning. But he's not through. Galatians 3, 26. You are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. Now, wait a minute. They had received the Spirit as the guarantee of the adoption, the adoption is sonship. The adoption is resurrection. They had been buried with Christ by baptism to be raised to walk in new life. All of this is directly related. Now, watch this. You are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus for... Connective particle for, this, this, this explains how they became children of God by faith. By faith in Christ. For, as many of you as have been baptized into Christ, have put on Christ. You became children of God by being baptized into Christ, where you put on, induceste, the form of the Greek, you put on. Christ on by being baptized. Now, watch this very carefully. There is, there is where? In Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you be Christ, well, how did they become Christ? You're all the children of God by faith in Jesus Christ, for you were baptized into Christ. If you be Christ, then you're Abraham's seed and you are heirs. Wait a minute. Paul said, remember, Romans 8, we have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. 
And those who are led by the Spirit are heirs. Again, perfect harmony, perfect parallels. And it all has to do with sonship. Sonship through resurrection. And Paul in Romans 6, Paul in Galatians 3, ties becoming sons of God to faith. You're all the children of God by faith for you've been baptized into Christ. I hope you'll think about that. Now, think about this. Paul is clearly writing to living, breathing human beings. But he says they had died, they had been buried, they had been raised to walk in in newness of life. They were walking in the Spirit. They were waiting for the resurrection. Folks, they weren't writing for a different, uh, waiting for a different kind of resurrection. They were waiting for the process that had begun, that had been initiated by their faith, their faith which gave them the right to become sons of God, John 1, 11 and 12. They were waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God, for the revealing of who they were at the resurrection, which was guaranteed by the miraculous gifts of the Holy Spirit. Seeing all of this emphasizes, drives home the point of how critical it is to understand a transitional period of time in the first century. From the beginning of their faith and the reception of the Holy Spirit, the miraculous gifts of the Holy Spirit, guaranteeing, guaranteeing the yet future to them manifestation of who they were, the yet future to them resurrection as sons of God. And yes, we've got more as we continue on this, as we talk about the inheritance. Don't forget, contact me for a free copy of Tony Denton's excellent book, Inheritance Bequeath the Law Deceased. You'll love the books, free of charge, postpaid, no obligation. Okay, and if you want a whole lot larger book on the same subject, by the way, because resurrection and inheritance go hand in hand, go to my website, donkpreston.com, bibleprophecy.com, and order the book, The Resurrection of Daniel, chapter 12, verse 2, Fulfilled or Future. And if you order the book, I will include free of charge a copy of Tony Denton's book. Okay, we've got more. We're going to be looking at Luke chapter 20, where Jesus said, in the resurrection or in the age to come, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but they're sons of God being sons of the resurrection. What? That's right, sons of the resurrection. We'll see you on the flip side.